Hello friends, happy Sunday evening as you can see. I hope you've had a nice weekend uh, that has had some weekendy aspects about it. The reason a uh, video is going up on Sunday is the Taming of the Shrew, which is what I will begin on Monday, I'm actually beginning tonight because as well as having five acts, it also has an induction stuck at the front of it. Two scenes that make the Taming of the Shrew a play within a play, and we never hear from the characters watching the play again. Apart from, uh, well, in, in this version, at the end, it has a couple of extra scenes where they interrupt the play and talk about it, but I'm not going to play those, partly because they weren't published, and partly because it's so weird, I'd, I'd rather it just melted away and let it Taming the Shrew happen. There is also um, music called for at one point in this scene, so if you want to pause... Uh, the video now to go and look out an, a nice bit of music to play. Uh, again, I will cue that, and then I think it keeps playing until the end of the scene, which isn't very long. Uh, so yes, here are some voices I've had to come up with for characters who never appear again, um, partly because I've decided they melt away. Ta-da! Induction, one. Enter Christopher Sly, the beggar. And the hostess. I feed you in faith! A pair of stocks, you rogue! You're a baggage of slides and no rogues! Look at the chronicles! We come in Richard Conqueror! Therefore, Paracus Palabris, let the world slide! Cessa, you will not pay for the glasses you have burst. No, not a denny year! Go buy St. Geronimo! Go to thy cold bed and warm thee! I know my remedy. I must go fetch the head borough. Whoa, third or fourth or fifth borough! I'll answer him by law. I'll not budge an inch, boy! Let him come and kindly... He falls asleep. Horn sound. Enter a lord from hunting with his train. Huntsman, I charge thee, tender well, my hounds. Hey, breathe, merriman. Oh, the poor cow is embossed. And couple chowder with the deep-mouthed brack. So, sir, not boy, how silver made it good at the hedge corner. In the coldest fault, I would not lose the dog for twenty pound. A white bellman is as good as he, my lord. He cried upon it at the merest loss, and twice today picked out the dullest scent. Trust me, I take him for the better dog. Thou art a fool. If Echo were as fleet, I would esteem him worth a dozen such, but sup them well, and look unto them all. Tomorrow I intend to hunt again. I will, my lord. Seeing Sly. What's here? One dead or drunk? Oh. See, doth he breathe? Second huntsman. Uh, he breathes, my lord. Were he not warmed with ale, this were a bed but cold to sleep so soundly. Oh, monstrous beast. Oh, like a swine he lies. Grim death. How foul and loathsome is thine image. So, I will practice on this drunken man. What think you, if he were conveyed to bed, wrapped in sweet clothes, rings put upon his fingers, a most delicious banquet by his bed, and brave attendants near him when he wakes? Would not the beggar then forget himself? Believe me, Lord, I think he cannot choose. It would seem strange unto him when he waked, even as a flattering dream or worthless fancy. Then take him up and manage well the jest. Carry him gently to my fairest chamber and hang it round with all my wanton pictures. Balm his foul head in warm distilled waters and burn sweet wood to make the lodging sweet. Procure me music ready when he wakes to make a dulcet and a heavenly sound and if he chance to speak, be ready straight and with a low submissive reverence say, What is it your honour will command? Let one attend him with a silver basin full of rose water and bestrewed with flowers. Another bear the ewer, the third a diaper, and say, Will please your lordship cool your hand? Someone be ready with a costly suit and ask him what apparel he will wear. Another tell him of his hounds and horse, and that his lady mourns at his disease. Persuade him that he hath been lunatic, and when he says he is, say that he dreams, for he is nothing but a mighty lord. This do, and do it kindly, gentle sirs, it will be pastime passing excellent, if it be husbanded with modesty. My lord, I warrant you, we will play our part, and he shall think by our true diligence he is no less than what we say he is. Well, take him up gently and to bed with him, and each one to his office when he wakes. Serving men carry Sly out. Trumpet sound. Sirrah, go see what trumpet is that sounds, enter a serving man. 
exit rather. But like some noble gentleman that means travelling some journey to repose him here. Enter a serving man. How now? Who is it? And please, your honour, players that offer service to your lordship. What bid them come near? Now, fellows, you are welcome, players. We thank your honour. Uh, do you intend to stay with me tonight? Uh, so please, your lordship, to accept our duty. With all my heart. This fellow, ah, I remember, I, since once he played uh, a farmer's eldest son. Twas where you wooed the gentleman up oh, so well, I forgot your name, but sure that part was aptly fitted and naturally performed. Another player. I think twas uh, Sotto that your honour means. Yes, it is very true. Ah, thou, thou didst it excellent. Well, uh, you are come to me in a happy time, uh, the rather for I have some sport in hand. Mm. Wherein your cunning can assist me much. There's a lord will hear you play tonight, but I am doubtful of your modesties, less over eyeing of his odd behaviour, for yet his honour never heard a play. You break into some merry passion and so offend him, for I tell you, sirs, if you should smile, he grows impatient. And I fear not, my lord, we can contain ourselves, were he the veriest antic in the world. Now, go, sir. Take them uh, to the buttery and give them friendly welcome, every one. Let them want nothing that my house affords. Exit one of the players. Uh, Sirrah, go you to Boas Bartholomew, my page, and see him dressed in all suits like a lady. That done, conduct him to the drunkard's chamber and call him Madam. Do him obeisance. Tell him from me, as he will win my love, to bear himself with honourable actions such as he observed in noble ladies unto their lords by them accomplished. Such duty to the drunkard let him do with soft low tongue and lowly courtesy and say, uh, what is your honour will command wherein your lady and your humble wife may show her duty and make known her love? And then with kind embracements, tempting kisses, and with declining head into his bosom bid him shed tears, as being overjoyed to see her noble lord restored to health, who for this seven years have esteemed him no better than a poor and loathsome beggar. And if the boy have not a woman's gift to rain a shower of commanding tears, an onion will do as well for such a shift, which in a napkin being close conveyed shall in despite enforce a watery eye. See this dispatch with all the haste thou canst, and anon I'll give thee more instructions. Exit a serving man. I know the boy will well usurp the grace voice gated action of a gentlewoman. I long to hear him call the drunken husband. <laughs> And how my men shall stay themselves from laughter when they do homage to this simple peasant. I'll intercounsel them. Haply my presence may well abate the overmerry spleen, which otherwise would grow into extremes. Induction 2. Enter aloft Sly, the drunkard, with attendants, some of the parrel, basin, and ewer, and other appurtenances, and lord. Oh, for God's sake! A pot of small ale! Oh, will please your lordship drink a cup of sack? Will please your honour taste of these conserves? What raiment will your honour wear today? I am Christopher Sly. Call me not honour or lordship. I now drank sack in my life, and if you give me any conserves, give me conserves of beef. Now ask me what raiment I wear, for I'm no more doublets than bags, no more stockings and legs, nor no more shoes than feet. I'd some of more feet than shoes, or such shoes as my toes look through the over leather. Uh, I haven't ceased this idle humour in your honour. Oh, that a mighty man of such descent, of such possessions, and so high esteem should be infused with so foul a spirit. What would you make me mad? Am not I Christopher Sly? Old Sly, son of Burton Heath? By birth a peddler? By education a card maker? By transmutation a bear herd? And now by present profession a tinker? Well, I ask Marion Hackett, a fat alewife of Winkoff, if she know me not. If she say I'm not 14 pence on a score for Shiro, score me up for the lying and slaving Christendom. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not destroyed. Here's... Oh, this is it that makes your lady mourn. Oh, this is it that makes your servants droop. Hence comes it that your kindred shuns your house as beaten hence by your strange lunacy. Oh, noble lord, bethink thee of thy birth. Call home thy ancient thoughts from banishment, and banish hence these abject lowly dreams. Look how thy servants do attend on thee, each in his office, ready at thy beck. Oh, wilt thou have music? Music? Ark! Apollo plays, and twenty caged nightingales do sing. Or wilt thou sleep? Will have thee to a couch softer and sweeter than the lustful bed on purpose trimmed up for Semiramis? 
Say thou wilt walk, we will bestrew the ground. Or wilt thou ride, thy horses shall be trapped, their harness studded all with gold and pearl. Dost thou love hawking? Thou hast hawks will soar above the morning lark. Or wilt thou hunt? Thy hounds shall make the welkin answer them and fetch shrill echoes from the hollow earth. Say thou will course, thy greyhounds are as swift as breathed stags, I fleeter than the roe. Dost thou love pictures? We will fetch thee straight Adonis, painted by a running brook, and Cytheria, all in sedges hid, which seem to move and wanton with her breath, even as the waving sedges play with the wind. I will show thee uh, Io, as she was a maid, and how she was beguiled and surprised. As lively painted as the deed was done. Or oh, Daphne, roaming through a thorny wood, scratching her legs at one shall swear she bleeds, and at that sight shall sad Apollo weep, so workmanly the blood and tears are drawn. Thou art a lord, and nothing but a lord. Thou hast a lady far more beautiful than any woman in this waning age, and till the tears that she hath shed for thee, like envious floods, o'er run her lovely face. She was the fairest creature in the world, and yet she is inferior to none. Am I a lord? And have I such a lady? Or do I dream? Or have I dreamed till now? Or I do not sleep. I see. I hear. I speak. I smell sweet savours. And I feel soft things. Upon my life I am a lord indeed. And not a tinker, not Christopher Sly. Uh, well... Bring our lady hither to our sight, and once again upon the smallest ale. I will please your mightiness to wash your hands. Oh, oh, how we joy to see your wit restored. Oh, that once more you knew but what you are. These fifteen years you have been in a dream, or when you waked, so waked as if you slept. These f fifteen years? Oh, my first a goodly nap. But did I never speak of all that time? Oh, yes, my lord, but very idle words, for though you lay here in this goodly chamber, yet would you say you were beaten out of door, and rail upon the hostess of the house, and say you would present her at the leet because she brought some jugs and osealed courts, so sometimes you, you'd call out for Cicely Hackett, Oh, the woman's maid of the house! Why, sir, you know no house, nor no such maid, nor no such men as you have reckoned up, as Stephen Sly, and uh, old John Knapps of Greet, and Peter Turf, and Henry Pimpernel, and twenty more such names, as, and men as those which never were, nor no man ever saw. Oh, well now, Lord, be thanked for my good amends. All. Amen. I oh, thank thee. Mm. Thou shalt not lose by it. Enter Bartholomew the page, as lady with attendants. How fares, my noble lord? Uh, marry, I fare well, but here is cheer enough. <laughs> Where's my wife? Here, noble lord, what is thy will with her? Are you my wife? You will not call me husband, my men shall call me lord, I am your goodman. My husband and my lord, my lord and husband, I am your wife, in all obedience. Yeah, I know it well. Uh, what, what must I call her? Madam. What, Alice madam or Joan madam? Madam, and nothing else. So do lords call ladies. Ah, uh, madam wife, they say that I have dreamt and slept above some fifteen year or more. Aye, and the time seems thirty unto me, being all this time abandoned from your bed. Well, uh, tis much. Servants, leave me and her alone, excellent lord and, and, and attendants. Madam, well, undress you and come now to bed. Uh, thrice noble lord, let me entreat of you to burden me yet for a night or two, or if not, until the sun be set. For your physicians have expressly charged in peril to incur your former malady, that I should yet absent me from your bed. I hope this reason stands for my excuse. You are, well, it stands so long, I may hardly tarry so long. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I would be loath to fall into my dreams again. Uh, I will therefore tarry in despite of the flesh and the blood. Enter a messenger. Your honour's players, hearing your amendment to come to play a pleasant comedy. For so your doctors hold it very meet, seeing too much sadness hath congealed your blood, and melancholy is the nurse of frenzy. Therefore they thought it good you hear a play, 
and frame your mind to mirth and merriment, which bars a thousand harms and lengthens life. Oh, marry, oh, let them play it. Is not a commentary a Christmas gamble or uh, a tumbling trick? Uh, no, my good lord, it is more pleasing stuff. Well, household stuff, it is a kind of history. Oh, well, 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 we'll see it. Come, madam wife, sit by my side and let the world slip. We shall ne'er be younger. While follow me sits. And that's the end of that. That's the end of the induction. Tomorrow the play starts. I'll stick that up there. Yesterday I'm sticking uh, Act 1 of last week's play, The Two Gentlemen of Rona. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all your comments, uh, any suggestions, anything you want to chat about the play, uh, whatever that was. Um, I hope you're all doing tremendously. Bye-bye.